And of course, now I'm thrilled to welcome back to the show, a friend of the show, Sandy Shellis, um, Environmental Coffee House. Hey, Hi. Sandy. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for producing that video. That was awesome. Well, I hope you learned something. That's the whole aim in my new incarnation of myself to, uh, you know, make videos that tell a story and people will learn from. Uh, definitely. That, that was full of information and uh, a lot of great graphics. And you did, you did a great job putting that all together. I love it. So it's uh, taken me years. Good. But that's well, not why we're here. No, we are here to do what the corporate media is not doing, which is telling us what's going on. So let's start at the beginning, because, again, our media doesn't do much in 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 the realm of climate. So COP27, this is an annual UN global gathering to deal with the climate issues. What does the mm -hmm. COP stand for? Do we know? It's Council of the Parties, and the uh, UNFCCC is the um, UN Climate Change Conference. And this has been a flow, Nicole. It, uh, it's been many, many years that this has been happening. Um, it's uh, nothing brand new, but 27 years, and we are still in negotiation terms, although there was a little bit more urgency this year, and there were things added to the agenda that are different, like loss and damage, and they are also calling this year the African COP because it's being held in Sharm al-Sheikh in Egypt. Right. And uh, yeah, and there's a lot of negotiating going on between 190 countries. There are 30,000 people attending. Wow. And a lot of times, uh, I will tell you though, Amy Goodman is there and Reuters is there and there are journalists there and you can find things, you know, uh, a little stuck, but the Guardian covers it, Financial Times, I mean, a lot of BBC, a lot of, uh, well, maybe not as much in the United States by design, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know, but it's very important. The president was there. He spoke, yep. President Biden. And, of course, John Kerry is an integral member. Uh, I don't agree with everything that he uh, wants to do. There's a lot of financial negotiations involved, but it's a flow. And this year is uh, the main topics, mitigation, adaptation. And for the first time in all of the years since Kyoto Protocol, uh, they are talking about loss and damage, and that is huge, loss and damage. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but uh, I don't know. I mean, look, just looking here in the U.S. about on the disasters we've had this year alone, mm -hmm. I don't know how this planet, this world can cover the losses on a global scale that we're experiencing. Look at Pakistan. Pakistan is like completely underwater, isn't it? Yeah, well, one third of the country, and I think thirty now if it's thirty million people, if my number's correct, I'm not sure, but thirty million people think about the enormity of that with flooding there. And one of the uh, they each day of this conference, there uh, they had Water Day, they had Gender Day. There are a lot of topics that are covering all of these. Uh, issues and at the same time concurrently within the conference there are world leaders um developing countries paired up with developed countries and their associated you know staff follow-up staff and the negotiations are a lot this year of finance and who's going to pay for what and uh, the african countries are also in a way they're saying well you know, we're sitting, you're asking us to sit on all of these resources. You're asking us to sit on fossil fuels, not drill, but nobody's coming up with the money right. to, uh, to help them. It's very, it's not follow through by the global north. And the United States is kind of getting beat up in this whole thing, too. Well, I, I understand that one of the focuses this this year is on 
you know, the having the big powers, hello, United States, China, you know, the big polluters yeah. pony up a little more because there are a lot of these nations mm -hmm. who are suffering the brunt of the problems and they've not contributed to it. These tiny little, you know, no. the Maldives is one. They're like completely right. underwater. They didn't cause this. We did. Sri Lanka. But Sri Lanka, right. And so this, uh, that was supposed yeah. to be a focus of this year's conference is to how to get the, the polluter, the people, the nations that are responsible for most of the damage mm -hmm. to help pay for the damage that's affecting these other smaller nations that didn't cause it, but are suffering most of the, the consequences. Well, they're asking for reparations, and uh, I, I've been watching a lot of the the smaller African countries, and I have been watching their representatives. There, there, there's been there have been uh, a lot of interviews that the, the COP TV they call it COP twenty seven TV, and uh, but of course, you know, they're planned interviews, but some of them have been very good, and you see. And also every day, the press conference, I watch the press conference and the, um, the secretary to the president of the conference gives a recap of what's been happening. And it, there, there are so many legs to this conference and how it started from Kyoto and then the Paris Agreement. And each thing has a piece that's being discussed within this conference it is huge these are commitments that the the paris agreement um was made for the ndcs and these are the nationally determined contributions which are not being held up by all countries not every country there are countries that are doing well with this and these topics this year the topics this year are many, but the ones that I have stuck with, I guess, this year, for me, it was gender. Believe it or not, the women, wouldn't you say it's time for the women to have a seat at the table? <laughs> yeah, beyond time, yes. Yeah. So the gender, it's brand new. And what they have been uh, talking about, they had an introduction, uh, introduction to gender and climate change and uh, basically talking about the impact that climate change has on women all over the world because of, you know, think about it. Droughts, landslides, floods, hurricanes, all of the things that are fires, all of the things that are happening. Women are disproportionately suffering the brunt of a lot of this, women and children. And women, they do play a, a critical role in the response here to climate change because of their local knowledge, um, leadership sustainable resource management not sustainable you know what they are doing and so it, it it would have been nice and and they're realizing these different countries even morocco i listened to morocco's speech it was a wow. gentleman but i listened <laughs> to him yeah talking about the importance of females now in these negotiating processes um i also watched one of the uh, IPCC, which is the inter uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change, right? They, now, they released the, the big release, the big report every yes. year. We just got one yes. not too long ago, and it basically the said game assessment. over, right? Well, <laughs> six assessment. Of course, at COP, yes. you're not going to hear game over by uh, you're not going to hear game over by all of the uh, the busy people there that are doing their negotiations. You're hearing a lot about the future. You're hearing a lot about the children. You're hearing that it's our responsibility, this age group, the older people's responsibility to try and do what they can. Uh, you're hearing about the meetings of the whole big tract on water. Water is uh, huge. Water Droughts is have huge. been all over the world. So these people, yes, they are taking all of the best science from the IPCC, which is, you know, it, it, scientists and governments. And they are then at this conference ha using to make policy, using all of the science. And I don't want to get into a lot of the science today, Nicole, because there's ample channels that we can, you know, totally 
focus you on to go. And, and I mean, even my channel is one of them, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of smaller channels where you can learn a whole lot on the science and the meaning between be, behind 1.5 uh, uh, C. And um, right now I think we're at 420 PPM. That's carbon dioxide uh, okay. in the atmosphere. You, let, me, let me stop you right there for a second, because let's go okay. back a decade right. or so, which is when a lot of people finally started paying attention. Bill McKibben was everywhere and he formed 350.org. Yeah. That yep. was 350 PPM. And now we're at what? Four what? 420. It was, well, 418. You know, it, 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 it wavers. It wavers. And what that means is that there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that does not let the heat out into, you know, into the outer, you know, the outer limits. The put stratosphere. It this way. I wish I could. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I wish I could give you my graphics, but it, it so it holds the heat in. So it, since then, it keeps growing because we keep emitting, and and we are also think about this, Nicole. We are really twenty years behind. So what we've done twenty years ago is now being felt and the most vulnerable countries, the people that didn't, like you said, you know, you, that did not contribute. They're the ones being hurt the yes, most. Right. So this COP 27, and of course they're already talking about COP 28. Right. It is a huge endeavor. And, you know, you hear a lot of people that are going to, um, they're going to say, well, they all flew in private planes, right? You know, yep. and they all 30,000 people did not fly <laughs> in private planes. Private planes. Yep. And again, it is all they're having them all over the world. People are going to fly until they're not. That's right. And then there's, you know, then there is the, um, the whole part of the, the COP 27, that's the trade show and the trade show all of the techno optimists are there with all of their different things that are, you know, from sustainable farming to, and, you know, and each of these also has a corresponding uh, official day, you know, all of them did all the topics this year. So the trade fair are where all the people that are having the solutions are right. selling their products, right. green this, green that, green energy, because it's all, that's the swing. It's a big trade fair. A lot of criticism to go around. Well, of but course, I mean, the trade I'm fair here. part is the is the capitalism mm -hmm. component, which, oh, you know, you the betcha. capitalists have to get in there. That's what they do. But this has to come down to um, not market forces. This has to come down to mandates, to people doing what they need to do to save the planet, right? It's not going to be what the market will bear. It's going to be what has to be done. And that's the question. Are they do? Are we doing it? Oh, the world is the world doing it. There are countries like Norway that are very green, but they still drill and uh -huh. sell. Mm -hmm. And of course now, and this went uh, duly noted at COP, now we, uh, of course, there's a war going on that's a larger war than uh, we've had in a while, and it's a, not a good one, and it's causing all kinds of supply chain problems, and that is another reason why countries like uh, in Africa are saying we have to, we have to do this. We're going to sell our our ex we're going to export our fossil fuels uh countries that we don't want europe to freeze so uh it's a conundrum when you think about the enormity of the issue really well it is you know look i i i i'm old enough to remember when al gore what came out with an inconvenient truth and yep. you know of course the right ridiculed him i it scared the shit out of me um yep. And he was right on every point. And here we are 20, 30 years later, and we've yeah. done really in the big picture, nothing. So um, what should we know, Sandy? What, what, what is happening there that will affect yeah. us anything? And are we making any progress at all? The progress, I, I believe, this year is bringing in the... Um, 
the different more topics, trying to get females involved, finally recognizing more so than ever that it really is, you know, this year was just insane. And the negotiations are just going to have to be Listen to they have to be taken seriously and I, I can't tell you if they will be they're always difficult when you're talking about countries with money ponying up and listen Nicole we can't African Americans in the United States have been asking for reparations for decades yeah that's true how do you think the political populace in the United States is going to feel about reparations for countries that they don't have a feel for, don't understand because of climate change when half of them don't believe in it. Right. That's the problem. We are dealing with a dumbed down society here. Uh, and because that's the way the Republicans like them, you know, the poorly educated. It, Donald Trump can do his con on people easier when they don't have access to real information. And unfortunately, we've got propaganda outlets posing as news channels so people think they're being informed when they're not oh it's it's crazy and when you look at the the different un websites and there's a lot there's the unfcc and there's all of the the information but when you watch these videos and you look at the comment sections when they don't close them or the live streams they're insane Oh, I the conspiracy, it's all over the world. The hatred of the UN, the distrust of the United Nations, and the distrust of everybody. This paranoia is where I come to say, I, you know, I, I think eventually the whole thing is just going to collapse like a, a folding deck of cards. Or like a tsunami, you know, just <laughs> wiping out part of the planet, right? part of the planet and it's already happening yeah it's and and another thing that people don't understand is a lot of the refugees are coming from these countries that are a hundred and we'll use fahrenheit 120 degrees fahrenheit that we're not used to it where there's drought where they cannot grow any food i mean all these things are being addressed at the cop whether or not finances only can solve it it's not finances are not no gonna solve it understanding though you know this this our country needs a huge awakening well tell me about it but you know what so let me i can speak about here in florida because i yeah. still live here for the time being do you remember the story last year about the high rise on the beach that collapsed yeah. Okay. That's in yeah. Surfside, right? So there's a big empty lot yep. there now with a wall, you know, dedicated to all the victims who died when the building came down. Mm -hmm. the, the land has now been sold to some foreign investor who's going to build an even higher high rise on that property. The and city of Fort Lauderdale it. is planning oh. on massive construction of new high rise buildings near the beach. They, they just, yeah, I guess they didn't, insane. they got the memo, but they didn't read it. It's, uh, it's astounding. They're just, and in Miami, which every time there's a high tide is underwater, they're raising the streets. I mean, they're, they're, they're putting band-aids on, you know, a, 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 a massacre slash, you know, they're, they're, <laughs> it, it, it's astounding that they're doing this, but that's what they're doing. So obviously and Florida. Local planning board. Yeah. They didn't get the message That's, down here. So no. do I think that the, the rest of the country and the rest of the world is getting the message? I mean, we, the United States and China, are the biggest problems, aren't we? Yes, and, we are. And are we, are we or they copying to it? cop um, and, and saying, <laughs> yes, we are responsible, yes. so we're going to come up and- Well, we and, are now. Oh, we are when now. Donald Trump was president for four years, we there was a lot of traction lost by first him pulling out of the Paris Agreement, even though it didn't take place until 2020, I believe, uh -huh. and then we're back in it anyway. But being back in the Paris Agreement, you know, you have to agree 
and you have even the uh, United States, they have to agree that these contributions are going to be uh uh, made and they have to agree that fine you know that technology and capacity capacity building which is for uh, the the smaller countries you know building capacity is really it's well I'll tell you what all these different parts of the the whole plan you know all this United Nations on climate change is there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle mm -hmm. and there's a lot of opportunity for people to get involved by training in these topics, training governmental people so that they understand when they go back to their countries, what they need to do to implement these down to the smallest level. And that's where some of the NGOs help too. The NGOs, non-governmental organizations. So, so Sandy, what, what, what do you want us to know? You've got, you know, the next ten minutes to tell us what we need to know that we're not being told or that we're not is not cutting through the noise. All right. Well, what's get, not getting through the noise is that we, the planet, is probably in worse shape than most people think mm -hmm. and the heat there's a lot of controversy in the scientific circles my friends uh people that i associate with that are uh saying that we have hit it look at the heat in the oceans it's another thing the oceans they they keep the heat uh in uh in 10 more years not even where the coral reefs are and shake in Egypt, right where they're having it, we keep going. The heat, they're not going to be there. Right. And so I, I suppose I, I want people to live their best life, but I also want people to do local service in for the environment. And, you know, the, the Republican Party is really good at telling people to get on school boards and to um, to do all these things for their agenda. Well, I think that there are a lot of us people on the left that should be working on the local level to make changes so that fracking doesn't come in. For example, Nicole, fracking for this in New York was my, I was terrified that Kathy Hochul would lose, even though mm -hmm. she is the, what you call, you know, corporate Democrat, whatever. I, I, I think that we can push her to keep the fracking moratorium and uh, make it into a ban, okay? We wouldn't have been able to do that. With, so, with Lee Zeldin, no way. So, no, right. no way. He was a Trump ass-licking Tony. And <laughs> he's, he's useless. And did anybody ever hear of Lee Zeldin before Ronald Lauder infused his his uh, campaign with millions of dollars in the two different packs? No. Right. Mm -mm. Well, and that's what happens. And that these big money guys come in yeah. and finance these, you know, these assholes who should not be in public <laughs> life. I was going to say service, but they don't understand service. It's not about service. It's, you know, <laughs> them trying to just amass power. For them, it's power, yeah. right? Yeah. For us, it it's is. survival, I think. It's survival. And I guess the, the, if so, if you want to take or take the COP27, which a lot of people do criticize, you know, all of this, but you take that and they're doing something, distill it down to the local level and get involved. I mean, where I live, it used to be concerned citizens of Allegheny County until uh, COVID, you know, get involved. Even if you join uh, anything, anything concerned citizens run, if you're young enough, run for office. Run for office and have an environmental agenda. And even if you understand, I mean, understand energy, okay, you drilling, you're burning, you're 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 raising the CO2. Uh -huh. Even but green technology is not the be all and end all. But there, ha I mean, I don't know what the be all and end all. But you're still having to use fossil fuels to mine for lithium you know, to do those things. So, you know, I would say because we don't have a lot of control over the big issues, but maybe if you want to keep mining out of your your town, you want to keep fracking out, uh, you want children to understand 
the the issues with climate change, run for school board, you know, bring a science agenda in, study, right. learn. Right. And you know what? This this is when I'm railing constantly against Nancy Pelosi, Jim Clyburn and Steny Hoyer, uh, it's not because they're old. You know, I don't rail against Bernie Sanders, who's just as old or older because he gets it. He doesn't act ancient. He he the kids flock to him because he's saying what needs to be said. The other people, the other geriatrics, I'm sorry, have their heads stuck back in the 50s and they don't get it. It's time for them to step aside and let the kids who are involved, who are stepping up on all these issues because it's their future at stake, let them start charting the course for the future because it's their future. We'll be dead. And the African delegation that did manage to get to council of the parties, did manage to make it to Egypt. Of course, they had to be relegated to a proper uh, protest area because there were a lot of rests. Egypt is not exactly the open country on the planet, but they, they, they're very articulate and they are saying the same thing about it's our future. You're doing this to us. We are the ones dealing with the floods and the famine and the deaths and the, you know, all of those problems. It's time globally. And I think some, maybe some of the people that are that are at COP that are representing may understand. Not all, right? Not all, right? Now, we, Joe Biden got up there and gave a speech and touted yes, the did. big, the big investment that we made for the first time in, into climate with the uh, the last the the. Inflation Reduction Act. Um, yeah, is that well, enough? Because I mean, yes, it's no. it's bigger than anything <laughs> we've ever done before. But in the in the grand scheme of things, it's just a tiny little drop in the bucket. Is it going to make uh, a yeah. difference? I don't know. I, I mean, again, I'm not an economist, mm-hmm. but um, we're spending an awful lot on the war, and I'm not going to go into the war because I think it's horrible. I, I, I but. We're spending so much money and so many resources on this. And it's just so sad that it started in the first place. Uh, Well, it is. The whole thing is pathetic. And and someone, Uh, and I'll say it again. I was ridiculed for saying it before, but I'll say it again. Someone needs to go in and take out Vladimir Putin because he's a madman calling the shots. And the rest of Russia knows he's insane. And this is a fool's errand. He's just killing people and you know, killing off the 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 power infrastructure of Ukraine water. right now. Water, power, right? Um, yeah. I'm some, drinking water. It's not water. Good. Water is life. <laughs> uh, someone yeah. needs to go in and take him out because that's the only way. Uh, you know, I'm seeing we got to negotiate. Someone go assassinate the fucking guy already, oh and then we God. can get the planet <laughs> back on track. Sorry, I call. I say well, it the way I don't I like him it. because of the Arctic Silk Road. I don't like him because he wants to plow ahead. Part of the war is because he wanted that the port for trade. Yep. They, they, you know, but the Russians are propagandized as well as we are. I mean, there are people in Russia that are welcoming the greening. They they right. think it's great that it's going to be warmer, and it's propaganda because they don't understand the full picture of climate change. Our whole planet is propagandized. Yeah. No, it's Human true. Trait. <laughs> it's it's horrible. So, you know, I, I th- yeah. it is it is and and again because now I have a face on it. We I talk to Tanya all the time and there are bombs raining great. down on them. It's insane. No. That's got to stop. And you know, so that's a ridiculous amount of money. I agree that's being spent to protect these people in Ukraine who did nothing to to warrant this. But also think about um Elon Musk blowing 44 billion dollars to wreck twitter really couldn't he have found something better to do with 44 billion dollars yeah what happened to his spaceships (laughs) yeah i could find something better to do with 44 billion dollars feed people Feed people, uh fund fund the loss and and damage portion of the COP27, Paris Agreement, Kyoto Protocol, everything. Exactly, yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're coming down Ooh. to the end. So right. we've got like a minute and a half left, Sandy Shellis. So, so what should we be doing other than, you know, acting with care? Don't waste water. Don't waste electricity. And the, the usual stuff that we've been doing, what else can and should we do? Get involved locally in an environmental organization because it trickles up. It, it trickles, trickles up. up. And stay informed. And if you have to, watch, you look at news from different countries, and but take everything with a grain of salt. But realize that we only have one planet. We've done a lot of damage. And that you should live your life with you know, as Guy McPherson says, with urgency, live your life with, uh, with a verve, live it. Don't wait for it to happen. We don't know at any moment what's going to happen. Don't look up. <laughs> don't look up. You said it. Yep. That was the perfect end, Nicole. I loved being with you. Thank Aww. you so much for having me as a guest.